Hi, I'm Bartosz from Cyrus, and in this video I will tell you a bit about CD players and why we believe there is still a good reason to invest in one. We all realize that the sales of CDs are going down, and streaming is the leading force in the audio industry today. But in our audiophile community, CD players still occupy an important position, as they are still considered by many high-end purists to offer the best quality of audio available, far better than what is achievable by many streamers. In this video, I would like to explain why CD players, at least the good ones, sound so good. And I'm going to start with the basics of how digital audio works. It's a common belief that digital signal is always perfect. And it's true as long as the signal stays digitized, as on a CD or in a computer file. Then it can be copied and transferred without any loss in quality. This is why digital is so popular with recording studios and as method of music distribution. However, human ears are analog and before we can listen to our favorite music, this digital signal needs to be converted to analog waves that our ears can decode. And it's this conversion that has the biggest impact on the perceived quality of audio. The biggest challenge that an engineer has to face when designing a product is to limit noise. You might think that noise doesn't matter as the signal is digital and it can be recreated perfectly. Not quite. Data travel through circuits as analog signal, a square wave for example, in which digital data is encoded. And as such, these analog signals are susceptible to noise just like any other analog signal. They can pick up noise from other sections inside the same product, such as power supplies, network modules, motor, error correction modules, etc. And any possible noise added to the analog signal in which digital data is encoded makes this signal more difficult to decode without errors. And if errors occur, some will be recovered perfectly due to inherent error correction algorithms, while others are interpolated or muted. The noise of digital signal manifests itself as jitter, meaning timing or quantitative errors happening during digital to analog conversion. As a result of jitter, the reproduced analog audio signal differs from the one that was digitized. Different sources have different challenges when limiting noise. The advantage of CD players over streamers is the fact that CD players are fully controllable. There is virtually no interference from the outside. This is much more difficult with streamers where the Ethernet and Wi-Fi modules add a lot of noise to circuits, as computer networks are very noisy beasts. Streamers usually contain some kind of a small computer which adds noise as well. Additionally, clocks, which play a vital role during the conversion, can be fully optimized and are generally much better in case of CD players, as these need to work with only one bit depth and sampling rate, meaning 16-bit 44.1 kHz. One could argue that the advantage of streamers lies in higher resolution audio compatibility. True, but without going into details, better sonic results can be achieved from a correctly reproduced 1644.1 signal than from a high-res file where the decoding environment is not as favorable. High-res may be seen as icing on a cake, but what's the point of icing if the cake is not edible? So, Coming back to CD playback, CD players are still very popular among high-end enthusiasts as they offer unbelievable quality if designed properly. In many cases, they outperform streamers. Let us now look at what Cyrus has done. As I said, everything boils down to noise reduction. 
as reduction in noise will allow unbelievable level of detail to be revealed. Let's have a look at possible sources of noise and what Cyrus has done to limit it. CD drives are these days manufactured with computer and automotive industries in mind. And there it is the speed and being shockproof that matter. If errors occur, the drive will reread the data and if necessary, correct the errors. In high-end audio, this is not acceptable. Rereads add a lot of noise as they make the motor and laser perform abrupt operations resulting in electric spikes. It is therefore much more important for the drive to be slow, stable and error-free in order to eliminate those voltage spikes. This can only be done by modifying the available hardware and writing tailored software controlling the unit. It's very costly and not many manufacturers are able to invest in this. Cyrus has invested a lot in its server evolution technology that reduces read errors by about 20% compared to other top players. This is an important element that contributes to the fantastic sound of Cyrus CD players. Related to read errors is noise added by error correction processes. In cases when a drive cannot read data properly, the relevant circuits will attempt to recover errors. Due to additional data encoded on a disk to help with this, there is a high chance many errors will be corrected perfectly. With uncorrectable errors, two approaches are taken, interpolation or muting. However, essentially we do not want those circuits to work at all, as when working hard, they add EMF interference. So fewer read errors that I talked about earlier will result in correction circuits being used less frequently, greatly lowering the level of noise. To demonstrate how server evolution technology helps limit noise, we use an output from a spectrum analyzer showing a histogram of the radio frequency signal generated after the laser reads the disk. These pictures are from exactly the same disk playing exactly the same track. This is essential as things like how worn the stamper was when the CD was made can also affect this picture. The left-hand image is the Cyrus CD8, one of our legacy products, using a mechanism produced by the best third-party supplier for CD mags at that time. The right-hand image is the Cyrus CD8 with our server evolution technology. In an ideal world, you would get single spikes at each frequency, but because of real-world tolerances, remembering that a CD is cheaply pressed bit of plastic with some silver paint on it, the right-hand picture is close to ideal. As you can see, the SE engine produces a much tighter grouping around the peak, making much more apparent what data is supposed to be read, leading to the error correction circuitry having to weigh less work. The image on the left is showing many more errors. These errors are being caused by things such as motor speed jitter and drift, and the laser losing focus or tracking accuracy. With all this, the CD still plays OK, as the error correction picks all this up and corrects it, but error correction circuitry is having to work much harder and therefore generating much more electrical noise in the system. Power supply circuits are extremely important in every audio product, and CD players are no exception. In case of CD players, there are a few things to consider here. First, noisy elements should be isolated from the rest as much as possible. It is achieved especially with the addition of the external power supply, such as PSXR2, that helps separate various circuits like motor, motor controller, output buffers, etc. Secondly, in case of CD players with a DAC board built in, it is crucial that the DAC receives a very stable reference voltage. Again, an external power supply improves things a lot. 
Thirdly, analog output buffers, which essentially clean the analog signal in which digital data are encoded, benefit a lot from cleaner power supply. It is also one of the things that an external power supply such as PSXR2 helps with. In case of integrated CD players, so those with a built-in digital to analog converter, the applied filtering stage plays a vital role. All DACs need to filter out frequencies above the maximum frequency that a given sampling rate is capable of reproducing. At a sampling rate of 44.1 kHz, the maximum reproduced frequency is 22.05 kHz, and it's very close to the edge of human hearing, which is generally assumed to be about 20 kHz. Therefore, the filters need to be quite steep, and the steeper they are, the more they will affect the audible frequency. In order to flatten the applied filters and consequently reduce their influence on the audible range, a lot of processing power is needed to oversample the material. Cyrus current DACs can oversample the incoming signal even up to 40 MHz and as a result the content audible to the human ear is affected very slightly by the filter itself. This is the technology that we use in our QXR digital card. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. So do arrange a demonstration with our local partner to find out how our CD players can improve your listening experience. Thanks for watching.